Like the leading competitive granola has half the fat. Have your granola and love it too. New Special K Low Fat Granola. News is brought to you in part by Cameco, making a difference in our community. Tonight. Taking their message to the streets. That's really shameful for a civic employee. Why library workers are upset with the city. Meeting the deadline. We should know a bit more in a few more weeks. Is the end in sight for the city's largest infrastructure project. And North Battleford hosts day three of our hometown tour. This is the CTV News with Rob McDonald and Chantel Huber. You are looking at a live shot of the crowd that is gathered at Rotary Plaza near the new Qplex in North Battleford. They're here to welcome us on day three of our CTV Fall Hometown Tour. Hello and welcome to North Battleford. I'm Chantel Huber. And I'm Rob McDonald. Just great to be in North Battleford tonight on our hometown tour. And look who we brought with us. Kevin Waz here. Kev, you're no stranger to these parts. No, um, I've done a lot of fundraising in this uh, for the Saskatchewan Baseball Hall of Fame, which is uh, actually in Battleford. We've been here for lots of fundraisers over the last last couple three years and Dana at the golf course so really enjoyed the day. Well we are glad to have you along Kev. A lot to take in along the North Saskatchewan including this. This scenic view is from high atop North Battleford from King Hill Lookout. The hill was constructed with the help of the local Rotary Club and gives you a 360 degree view of the Battleford's River Valley, the city of North Battleford and the town of Battleford. And as you can see, it is starting to look like fall. It is certainly an exciting time here in North Battleford. Uh, they're celebrating the opening of their new arts and sports facilities. We're going to show you the Decker Center in a few minutes. Yes, and Kev, a lot of people in town talking about this new aquatic center just over here and other sporting facilities as well. Boy, they've really needed a new aquatic center for years. I've been in the old one over by the hockey rink and uh, it was in dire strait over the years. This new facility is a destination area and I think it's really going to help North Battleford out immensely. And just Kevin beautiful. knows firsthand because he had a little chance to get a little <laughs> wet a little earlier yeah. today. We'll uh, show you that in a few minutes. We'll also, also show you how the city is planning for its centennial right now. We'll send things back to Craig Wilson in our Saskatoon studio for a look at today's all right, thank you, Chantel. Well, the nomination deadline has closed and the list of candidates has been finalized for this fall's civic elections. 28 people will vie for 10 seats on Saskatoon City Council, while three will campaign to become mayor. So who's on the ballot? Well, Matt Young joins us to put the vote in perspective. Matt, let's start with who's running for mayor. Well, we have three candidates vying for the top job at City Hall. They include incumbent Don Atchison, who is seeking his fourth term as mayor. He's being challenged by agriculture researcher Tom Wolf and consultant Clay Mazurkowicz. And all three will run a very hard-fought campaign. Then there are candidates running for one of ten seats on City Council. And two notable wards we are going to keep our eyes on are Ward 8 and Ward 4. Of course, I have a City of Saskatoon local government election map right here on this screen. And if I scroll down. I can see Ward 4 sitting here on the western part of the city. Ward 8 covers most of the eastern part of the city. Now, with both Glenn Penner and Miles Height retiring, those two are the only wards where the incumbent is not seeking re-election. So in Ward 8, we have four candidates. They are Project Manager Erica Lawson, Executive Director Ainsley Robertson, Registered Nurse Karen Rooney, and Real Estate Developer Sharon Wingate. Now, the two candidates that are running for the seat, that's here in Ward 4. They are Troy Davies, who is a paramedic and Sean Shaw, who is a senior geochemist. And of course, no acclamations this year, so every ward will be contested on the ballot, and we will have all your latest election coverage throughout the election. All right, thanks, Matt. Matt Young reporting on the close of nominations for the civic election. Well, let's take a look at candidates running for mayor of some of the other cities in our viewing audience. It's a three-way race for mayor of Prince Albert. Current city councillor Greg Dion has thrown his hat in the ring. So has realtor Dean Link. And current mayor Jim Scarrow will try for another term. In North Battleford, Mayor Ian Hamilton has been acclaimed for another term. There will be a new mayor of Martinsville this fall. The current mayor is not running again. That race is between councillor Kent uh, 
Jeff Munch, Darnell Cusick, and Scott Pilling. The mayor of Humboldt will stay the same. Malcolm Eaton is back for his third term. There are two candidates running in Melfort. Councilor, city, uh, current city councilor Rick Lang will go up against current mayor Doug Terry. Meadow Lake will keep its mayor. Uh, Gary Vidal has been acclaimed for another term. And this will be the first city council for Warman, as it will soon become Saskatchewan's 16th city. Incumbent Mayor Cheryl Spence has been acclaimed. It will be her third term as mayor. And for a complete list of candidates in the region, you can visit our website at ctvsaskatoon.ca. Well, we will have more news coming up in a few minutes, but right now we'll send things back to Rob Chantel and Kevin, who are standing by in North Battleford. Thank you, Craig Wilson, uh, in our Saskatoon studios. We are live from Rotary Plaza here in North Battleford. A good crowd behind us here as we continue our hometown tour. Yeah, we brought Kevin along today, and we actually made Kevin do some work. You had a chance yeah. to uh, talk sports in North Battleford. Yes, uh, Kevin Hasselberg has done a very good job. Second year as head coach of the Battleford North Stars. They had a big year. They're kind of in a rebuilding year, so I kind of caught him off guard today. He was under a little bit of pressure. Oh, Kevin. Yeah, we're also going to see Kevin in the pool. We'll have a lot more on that coming up. First, a look at what makes North Battleford tick. North Battleford is nestled in the west central part of the province along the North Saskatchewan River Valley along highways 16 and 4. The community was founded in 1904 by the Canadian Northern Railway. It became a village in 1906 and by 1913 had achieved city status. Today, North Battleford has a population of almost 14,000 people and a trading area that serves more than 52,000 people. The community is a full-service hub with many retail outlets, but also has a lot to offer for recreation with Jackfish Lake and Table Mountain Ski Hill nearby. Well, you know, this has been a huge week for the city of North Battleford. Uh, they are celebrating the opening of their brand new sports and arts facilities here. Yes, and we had a chance to tour the Qplex, which has been years in the making. Take a look. The Credit Union Qplex is a four-component multi-purpose facility featuring an aquatic center, a curling rink, field house, and a performing arts center. The Decker Center, North Battleford's new performing arts center, was named after former CFQC radio host Harry Decker. It boasts a full stage, rehearsal areas, and seats up to 385 people. It's expected to be the place to go for plays, concerts, and other live performances, a great boost for local performers. After a number of years having to, I guess, make do, although we've had some good facilities, this has just truly put us into the era with everybody else. So we're we're looking forward to opportunities to do shows that we could never do before because we'll have better equipment, more space. Opening soon are the BTC Fieldhouse and the Northland Power Curling Center. The Fieldhouse will have two fields to host sports such as soccer, football, baseball, as well as volleyball, basketball, tennis and badminton. It will also feature a running track and an area for trade shows. The curling center will have six sheets of artificial ice, a lounge, cafeteria, and seating, filling a much-needed void in the community. North Battleford had been without a curling rink for a few years until now. And the Battleford's Co-op Aquatic Center features a six-lane, 25-meter competition pool, two water slides, a steam room, a hot tub, and a wave pool. It replaces the Kinsman Aquatic Center, which served North Battleford for more than 40 years. And while we were there, Kevin was challenged to a water slide race by Mike Halstead, Marketing and Communications Coordinator. And it appears Kev will have to brush up on his water sliding skills. Mike beat him by a long shot. Rob Rongby and Heath Gabrick are with me now. They both have spent a lot of time helping to fundraise for the Qplex. Thank you both for being here today. I know it's an exciting time. Tell us a little bit about the, the work that has really gone into building this beautiful facility. Yeah, well, uh, of course, the city committed about uh, three years ago to uh, doing this, and the mayor had asked Heath and I uh, to co-chair the committee to raise the fund, the community portion of the funding. Uh, so we committed uh, just about three years ago to raising $10 million uh, for to help offset some of the cost of this facility and uh, so we struck a committee there's been about 15 of us working for the pretty well the last three years and uh, that came to an end basically today so uh, we worked many different things of course uh, you turn we tried to leave no stone unturned and uh, we had actually Kevin Walk came up for a celebrity golf tournament uh, last thing. summer <laughs> yeah it was great to have him here of course he's a Boston Bruins fan and that's who we had here uh, so it's been a lot of work a lot of fun we've met some amazing people and and uh, uh, 
uh, we're just thrilled to uh, be here. And I understand there was a, a big announcement today. Uh, tell us the big news. There were two announcements this afternoon. Uh, Scott Builders is one of the uh, the uh, construction companies that were uh, commissioned for the two facilities, and uh, so they they put forth a hundred thousand dollar commitment uh, to our ten million dollar goal for uh, different various things in the in the curling facility and the field house. So and then uh, the the last one to uh, to get us to our, our ten million dollar goal was a uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars dollar contribution uh, to uh, the uh, Decker Center for the Performing Arts in memory of Gordon Tatusis and, and Eileen Tatusis was here today uh, and it, it basically comes from uh, BATC, the uh, Battleford Agency Tribal Chiefs, through the Gold Eagle Casino and the Profits through the Community Development Corporation. So they were uh, the two announcements uh, that uh, allowed us to uh, be able to announce today that we've uh, met our $10 million goal for the community to have a facility here. And it is, it is a beautiful facility. It Congratulations is. to both thank of you, you and much. thank you for being here thanks tonight. For being here. Thank you thanks for, for having to you. celebrate with us. Yes. We're happy to do that. Thank Great you thanks. both, gentlemen. Wonderful stuff. Thank you, guys, <laughs> for sure. You know, we mentioned Harry Decker earlier as being involved with CFQC Radio. He, of course, played a big role in radio in North Battleford as well as CGMB, as the Decker family still does, and we just wanted to clear that up. Mm -hmm. sure. Hey, the Cuplex is a great example of how North Battleford is looking to the future, but this community has a big history as well. Yes, it is also uh, planning its centennial for next year and we actually met someone who is very busy gearing up for the big event. Tammy Donahue joins us as North Battleford plans its 100th anniversary year in charge of the archives here and which I believe started in 1988. Tell us a little bit about the North Battleford archives. The North Battleford archives came to be in 1988, March actually, um, and it was um, born out of the 75th anniversary of the city of North Battleford. Um, a gentleman by the name of Robert Clipperton decided that they needed a place to house um, material from the history of North Battleford, so that's uh, basically how it was born. Well, the city is well documented here, of course, and you're working on a book for the centennial for, for uh, 2013. How did that come about? Well, we have the original 1913 book from the city, uh, from the North Battleford uh, area at that time. And uh, it was the city, I guess, at that time. And so um, the committee members and myself, we decided that we'd like to commemorate our 100 years by um, by putting together a 100-year book. And what goes into doing something like this? A lot of work, <laughs> a lot of discussions, a lot of decisions, uh, but a lot of fun. It is uh, such something that we all enjoy very much. And it's just a joy to look back at the old pictures and, and to relive that time. It's just wonderful. And a lot of volunteers, I imagine go into this too. Yes, we have a great group of volunteers and these individuals are knowledgeable um, and very insightful on the history of North Battleford. Tammy, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Well, if you're ever in North Battleford overnight, we want to show you something that is definitely worth checking out. Yes, it certainly is a bright spot along the city's skyline. Every night, North Battleford's most recognizable landmark lights up the sky. Lights on the city's water tower were first lit in 1988 during North Battleford's 75th anniversary and were replaced in 2009 with LED lights. You can catch a glimpse of this spectacular sight every evening between dusk and 9 a.m. Kevin. Yes, Rob, uh, with me now, Jody Hargraves. Jody, congratulations. You're the manager of the Battlefords Co-op Aquatic Center. What a beautiful center we were in there today. It is very beautiful. We're very excited to be open finally. It's an amazing place, and we're excited to have everybody coming and visiting us. Well, we saw a little bit earlier in the newscast what you had. Maybe just tell the folks what you have in the facility. Well, we have two very fast water slides, as you got to find One out today. One was slower. <laughs> One was a little slower than the other, but they're very very fast. We have a wave pool. We have a six-lane, 25-meter lap pool where we have um, we host our user groups like the scuba club and the synchro club and the swim club. Um, we have a lazy river that's very long and not so lazy when we turn those waves on and a nice hot tub to sit and relax in. Relax in. You know, talk about the programming because when you do bring a new facility, uh, new programming, and maybe talk about your instructors, everybody's up to par here and ready to welcome everyone in the area. We sure are. Our lessons take off next week. We're very excited to have our fall Red Cross swimming lessons. We're also very excited to be introducing a very brand new fitness program.